performing at an optimal level mentally requires a certain series of kind of events. Like, for example, on days when I'm filming a bunch of videos, I know that I need to be super articulate. I need to be on my game. My vocabulary needs to be good. I, just, I need to be able to retain information. I need to be able to have the repository of information that I already have in my brain be readily accessible. So what I've done is I've actually written down what I do on a day where I need to use my brain. And I figured I'd share it with you guys. Because you all have those situations where you're going to have a day where you need to use your brain more than another day. Maybe you have a really important meeting. Or maybe you're going to be on camera. Or maybe you're meeting someone important. So I'm going to walk you through a four-step routine that's going to be nutrition-based, exercise-based, somewhat supplement-based, and also lifestyle based. So you're gonna have four different things that you can do all within a different vertical to help make it so that you have the most optimized day. And this is something that I've refined over the years. So we're gonna have a lot of fun with this. So let's go ahead and let's dive right in. But first, you are tuned into the internet's leading performance, nutrition, and fat loss channel. New videos every single Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time, but why not? We do them throughout the rest of the week as well. Also, make sure you hit that little bell button that'll allow you to turn on notifications so that you never miss a beat whenever I post an educational video, but more importantly, you'll never miss when I do a live broadcast where I actually answer questions live. So without further ado, let's get into my mental optimization routine. All right, so the first thing I wanna talk about here is just the nutrition side of things. And this is very basic. It's just a one trick pony little thing that you can do. I'm not gonna overwhelm your brain. Okay, that is do whatever you possibly can to keep your blood sugar stable even if that means going to somewhat extreme measures. You see, the brain runs on glucose. So if we have constant ebbs and flows in glucose, we're gonna have surges in brain activity that are gonna make it so that different areas of our brain are receiving different electrical impulses. So when you look at any kind of MRI of the brain or some of these other things, you start noticing that different foods trigger different parts of the brain to light up. We just wanna keep it nice and even, okay? So whatever you do, you either wanna fast or you wanna keep protein and carbs out of the equation. Because yes, protein can still trigger a rise in your overall glucose level. So we wanna keep that out of the equation, at least on these days, first thing in the morning. So if I'm going into filming, I am not gonna eat, or if I do eat, I'm literally just having like a tablespoon of coconut oil or something. You see, they've actually shown that having higher levels of blood glucose is associated not only chronically with a smaller hippocampus, but even in the short term is associated with less blood flow to the hippocampus. The hippocampus is very, very important when it comes down to memory, when it comes down to vocabulary, when it comes down to just being able to be articulate and fluent at a specific point in time. Now, another thing that people and researchers are starting to look at is we have a specific insulin degrading enzyme. And this insulin degrading enzyme helps carry out excess insulin and excess sugar away from the brain or away from other areas of the body. Now, the hard part is, is if this enzyme ends up getting elevated so much, eventually we don't produce it as much and that ends up leading to plaque. So we end up with this amyloid plaque in the brain. So now, for the short term, sure, we want to keep glucose controlled, but for the long term, if we keep glucose controlled, then we don't develop that beta amyloid plaque that ends up leading to a chronic reduction in the size of the hippocampus. So basically, if you want to be smarter, if you want to feel sharper, keep the blood sugar stable. Okay, so keep the carbs into the equation, keep the fats nice and high, or just fast. All right, now let's head on over to the gym and let's talk about a quick workout thing that you can do that truly is going to make a big difference in how you mentally perform. So I used to think that when I needed to use my brain that I needed to keep my workouts to a minimum on that particular day. It's like I was trying to preserve my energy and trying to make it so that I just wasn't exhausting all of my resources on my workout so that I could be on top of my game. But then I started to realize that it really wasn't consistent. I would have some days where I'd feel good, some days when I wouldn't. So I started intertwining my workout into those days too, always making sure that no matter what, I would always go and get a workout in before I would have to be on camera. But then I started to refine that process even more and I started doing more in the way of shorter, but higher intensity workouts. And I found that my mental performance was significantly better. So now I always go in and do some kind of either 10 to 20 minute high intensity interval training workout because it just gets me on my game. But as I start looking into the research, I realize that there is some serious concrete evidence as to why this is truly working for me and why it's honestly gonna work for you too. You see, just like the heart adapts whenever we work out hard, the brain actually adapts too. We're exposing our brain to stress. 
So it ends up pumping out some specific proteins known as FDNC5, which therefore elevates what's called brain-derived neurotropic factor. There's a lot of news surrounding the world of BDNF right now. BDNF basically produces new neurons. It makes it so that we can literally grow our brain, but it has an immediate effect too. When we push ourselves really, really hard, the brain has to adapt to stress. So all these different systems and processes within the body tend to move a lot of neurochemicals and a lot of blood flow over to the brain. So I find that I end up having a good six or seven hours of high mental capacity after doing just a short bout of high intensity interval training. Now the caveat here is don't push it longer than like 20 or 30 minutes. Just go in, get a short, quick workout, and it makes a really big difference. See, there was actually even a study that was published in the journal PNAS that took a look at 120 middle-aged to older adults. And it found that when they did some kind of higher intensity activity, they were able to increase the size of their anterior hippocampus. So basically preserving their overall mental function. Now this of course was long term, but it's also applied short term. We get more activity going to that anterior hippocampus, which again is exactly what allows us to have a sharp vocabulary, to be able to pull from our brain, be able to pull from our memory stores a lot quicker. It's like being able to just pull a book right off the bookshelf and be able to open up straight to the page that you need to reference. So when we increase the blood flow and the size of the hippocampus, we make that possible. Now another study that was published in the Journal of Medicine and Science in Sports and Exercise took a look at exercise intensity and its relation to brain-derived neurotropic factor. So this one's fascinating. It took a look at 15 test subjects. So they had these test subjects work at either 10% more than their ventilatory threshold or 20% less than their ventilatory threshold. And what they found at the end of the study is that those that worked at 10% more of their ventilatory threshold, basically pushing it harder from a respiratory standpoint, ended up having a 13% increase in BDNF. That's a huge, huge increase. That is a lot of new neuron growth. That's a lot of new brain cell growth. Now, the interesting thing is, the group that worked at a lower intensity, at 20% less than their ventilatory threshold, ended up having no change in BDNF. So that's the thing. It's like, that's exactly what I saw with my own experience. It was like, Working out seemed to kind of do something, but it wasn't until I actually pushed it to a higher intensity and was really pushing that respiratory rate and that ventilatory threshold that I actually saw an increase. And then of course, getting in the habit of doing that, you get a really powerful long-term effect as well. So we've talked about nutrition, we've talked about the exercise portion, but now let's talk about sort of the nootropic slash almost supplement portion of what I would do. So I'm always trying to find new ways to like get a little bit of an extra edge. And sometimes that means messing around with supplements. Sometimes it means messing around with food timing. But lately I've been into the world of adaptogens. And if you've watched my videos, then you know that I'm always talking about that. So adaptogens are like usually mushroom blends or living organisms that actually help change our bodies and change our brains a little bit. So the whole purpose of an adaptogen is to help your body find balance and modulate where it needs to ultimately go. Because adaptogens are essentially like, they're, they're not living creatures, but they're things that actually have intelligence, right? So like mushrooms, for instance, have quote unquote intelligence for lack of a better term. So kinds of things that actually condition your brain to make changes in order to find balance. So a good example of like adaptogens and homeostasis in like the hormonal world would be things that help balance our hormones and help level off testosterone or level off estrogen. But believe it or not, we have the same effect that can happen in our brain when we utilize adaptogens. So I'm really into like chaga mushroom. Okay, so chaga mushroom, for instance, is really powerful because it helps balance acetylcholine in the brain. Our brain needs acetylcholine in order to produce energy. And what ends up happening is when we're under stress, we end up having all this damage that occurs that makes it so acetylcholine doesn't go into the brain the same way. So we're not getting the same brain energy. Without acetylcholine, we don't think clearly. Now, here's the issue, like, if you were to just take exogenous acetylcholine, you would end up in a situation where you're like totally, just, it just wouldn't work, right? You can't just do that. But what you want to do is you want to balance your body's ability to process and utilize and create acetylcholine, and that's how you're going to be able to ride the wave no matter if you're stressed. So the purpose of me saying this is there's times when you have to mentally perform, or like times when I have to be on camera, when I have a lot of things going on in my personal life or in my business life that might be causing oxidative damage or oxidative stress, and I wouldn't ordinarily be able to think clearly. But by utilizing chaga and by utilizing adaptogens, I'm able to think properly. So it's very, very important. And then other things like reishi mushroom, very powerful things when it comes down to nerve growth factor. 
Now, this is something that's swept under the rug a lot, but the fact is nerve growth factor is very big. You see, when we have things like neurite outgrowth on neurite-bearing cells, that's literally new nerve growth, we are literally making our brain smarter. We're making our brain have a larger capacity to handle things. And this is super important because it happens on a small scale immediately, but it happens on a large scale over the long term too. Now, if you watch my channel, you know I'm a big fan of Four Sigmatic, but I've got something that's even cooler in this case. So Four Sigmatic now actually has been able to make their mushroom coffee into a latte. So everything that I talked about in this video with keeping your blood sugar stable and everything would work with this because now they use a coconut powder in addition to a chaga powder. And they also have mataki mushroom, which is also going to help with nerve growth factor. And all these things are literally in a packet that you can add to some almond milk or some water. So now I'm sipping on lion's mane or I'm sipping on chaga or I'm sipping on four sigmatic whenever I'm filming because I'm getting that nice constant flow of the adaptogens that I need to think nice and clear. So we talk about nutrition, we talk about exercise, we talk about nootropics slash supplements, but the cool thing is down in the description, you can get your hands on the mushroom latte mix. Brand new thing, actually a latte form, not just plain old instant coffee flavor. So go ahead and check them out. Special discount for all my subscribers below. So the next thing that I wanna talk about is something where you can actually implement as a lifestyle change. Okay, whether you're in a hotel room or whether you can't work out that day or whatever, it's something that you can do no matter what the situation and it's gonna make a big boost in your overall mental performance. It's a very powerful thing to do. And that is simply taking a cold shower or an ice cold bath. Cold shower is a little bit easier because you can just turn it on and do it wherever you are. The cool thing is you're gonna get a similar effect with that cold shower as you would with your high intensity interval training. You're exposing your body to stress. And when you expose your brain to stress like that, it actually develops new cells. Brain derived nootropic factor increases when you're exposed to stress like that. Who would have ever thought that stress can actually help us out? Okay, now you also have a big increase in beta endorphins and you have a big increase in norepinephrine. That's why when you take a cold shower, suddenly you're like, ah, I feel alive, right? It's because you're actually getting an endorphin rush. It's stress, but it's endorphins. We all have to just have to change how we perceive that stress, right? So if you jump into ice cold water and you perceive it as negative, well, the endorphin rush is gonna be there, the norepinephrine is gonna be there, but your perception is negative, so everything is scary and bad. But if you're stepping into that cold shower and expecting it to be a good thing for you, then the physiological shock is still there, and that's just freaking epic because you're getting the shock, but you're getting a, a, a twist on it that's making it mentally positive. So you really, really wanna have that. Now the other thing is, we have a lot of nerve density in our skin, right? So when we expose our skin to really cold temperatures, we get a big electrical charge. And this big electrical charge triggers a cascade of responses within your body. This electrical charge in and of itself amps up your brain. It helps, again, produce brain-derived nootrophic factors. So you're getting all this increase in BDNF just from hopping in a cold shower. Now the other thing is, you a lot of times feel really good right when you jump out of a cold shower in terms of just mentally. And the reason that is, is because again, because of the large stimulation of electrical activity that occurs because of the nerve density, you have a big increase in what is called dopaminergenic transmission. Okay, basically you're having more dopamine. It's like literally you just got a good dopamine response, similar to like if you were to consume something sweet or anything like that. You're getting that same dopamine hit and it lasts for a long time. So there we have it, simple, basic, and everything that you can do in a short matter of time. Keeping your blood sugar stable, doing 10, 20, maybe 25 minutes of high intensity interval training, messing around with adaptogens and utilizing four sigmatic if possible, and then taking an ice cold shower and standing it for maybe two and a half minutes if possible. And that's it. That's my mental optimization routine on days that I'm filming or days that I have to be on point. So if you ever just feel like you need to be a better version of you on one specific day, this is gonna help you out. As always, make sure you're keeping it locked in and post your comments down below and maybe I'll answer your questions in a weekly roundup.